Elon Musk lashes out against cancel culture as a populist revolt surges. In this video, we're going to take a look at the latest tweet from the ultra-billionaire rebel, why Elon Musk appears to be fast becoming one of the major leaders of the growing populist revolt, and why the latest progressive purge may indeed be awakening a populist giant like we have never seen. You are not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Wonderful to be with you as always. We're here to give you conservative hope in the midst of these turbulent and trying times by analyzing current events in light of conservative trends so that you can think better and therefore feel better. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a regular part of this channel where each and every single day we relentlessly focus on optimism and encouragement in the midst of these ridiculously turbulent times. Now, before we dry, dive in here, let's give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video. And that's our good friends over at Noble Gold. Silver and gold, gang. Silver and gold. When times are tumultuous and turbulent, you can't beat it. There's frankly never been a better time to start a gold or silver IRA in your portfolio. And the amazing staff over at Noble Gold are ready to help you in any way that they can. If that's not incentive enough, Noble Gold is giving away the U.S. Mint's own solid silver 5-ounce $1 Apollo 11 moon landing coin with each qualifying gold or silver IRA. It's absolutely beautiful. So don't wait. Click on that link below or visit their website at noblegoldinvestments.com or give them a call at 877-646-5347. Make sure to mention my name, Dr. Steve Turley, and let's ride that gold and silver wave together. All right, let's dive right in here. The ultra-billionaire Elon Musk has once again signaled that he wants nothing to do with the kind of world that a bunch of left-wing oligarchs in Silicon Valley are trying to impose upon us. Musk, who just became the world's richest man with a net worth of over $185 billion, he took to Twitter, which again is always ironic during these times, ex exploiting the problem in order to reveal the problem. But he took to Twitter the other day and he retweeted a Babylon B post, you know, the sat satirical site Babylon B, which is so funny. He retweeted the Babylon B satirical headline, evil fascist dictator censored and voted out of office. <laughs> and the tagline is the dangerous, evil, all powerful fascist Nazi dictator Donald Trump has been voted out of office and censored. And to accentuate the point, Musk tweeted out the comment to his 42 million Twitter followers, quote, a lot of people are going to be super unhappy with West Coast high tech as the de facto arbiter of free speech, close quote. Now, of course, Musk is referring to the recent progressive purge throughout social media, beginning with Twitter's and Facebook's banning of President Trump from their respective platforms. Many are indeed interpreting this latest purge really as nothing less than a big tech coup. In other words, we have tech giants who have the tools and the power to block social dissent and silence political speech that they don't like. And they are, in fact, using those tools oppressively and quite openly, banning the president of the United States himself. But Musk appears to be one of the few of the world's ultra billionaires to stand up and, in effect, say, you know what? Uh, I think that's not a very good idea. I think a lot of people are going to rightly push back against you on that. In other words, and I think Musk nails it here, notice, again, notice what he said in the tweet. I think a lot of people are going to be super unhappy with West Coast high-tech elites, right, as a de facto arbiter of free speech. That's pure populism, gang. Populism involves a massive backlash of the people against the political class, a class of political corporate media elites who rule according to their own dictates at the expense of the concerns and the values of the wider population. Populists are deeply suspicious of a class of elites, particularly corporate elites, who the people see as de facto dictators, using their financial power to reconfigure life around their values, their interests, their own desires, which so often stand at odds with the values, interests, and desires of the people. Now, this isn't the first time that Elon Musk has tapped into populist rhetoric. I'm sure you remember when California originally implemented draconian lockdown measures last spring. Musk made it clear that he believed those measures were ridiculous and he thought everyone ought to rise up against them. In fact, he announced that he's not only suing Alameda County in California, where he had a major, I think he still has a major Tesla facility, 
but that he was indeed going to take Tesla out of the tyrannical state and move his company either to, at that time, was Nevada or Texas. And as part of his own personal revolt against California's lockdown measures, Musk famously called on all millions of his Twitter followers to, quote, take the red pill, which, of course, as you know, is a reference to the Matrix movie, where the main character, Neo, is offered a choice to take the red pill, which would open his eyes to the reality of the tyranny under which he was living, or he could take the blue pill, which would effectively enable him to remain ignorant of his actual imprisonment. And so in recent years, the term taking the red pill involves a person who is either politically left or even ambivalent, but who suddenly realized the deception we're all living under with left-wing globalist oligarchs in charge over our lives. And so a red pill person joins the true resistance, which is the populist revolution against the liberal left-wing globalists in power going on quite literally all over the world. And so, of course, Elon Musk did indeed end up renouncing uh, California as home for the past 25 years. He recently announced he has officially moved to Texas. So he's relocated from a state that slaps a 13% income tax on capital gains to a state that has zero personal income tax. God bless Texas. And he plans to move his entire Tesla facility to Texas as well. Now, to further add some street cred, as it were, to Elon Musk's growing populist sentiment, he is good friends, of course, with Joe Rogan, who also just moved out of California for Texas. The two of them seem to share a common worldview, a common suspicion of elites in power. And so there's no question that Elon Musk could, again, could, be a powerful force to help lead a populist revolt against globalist elites. We have to understand that the dynamics that are in play here are all interchangeable. And pundits are starting to recognize that. They're starting to recognize that what big tech is doing here may in fact be the single greatest gift that the populist backlash could ever have been given. Now we'll get into why, but first, in response to this latest progressive purge, we here at Turley Talks are currently setting up a number of different alt tech sites so we never ever lose touch with each other and we would love to share with you all the different sites that we're on and you can find out by simply clicking on the link below and signing up for our alternative media directory now this directory is going to make sure that you find precisely the alt tech site that's right for you and best of all you'll learn how to think better so you can feel better but without all the threat of censorship. It's absolutely free, so make sure to just click on that link below and sign up for our Turley Talks alternative media directory today. All right, so how is this crackdown possibly the single greatest gift populace could be given? Well, what I mean by that is that pundits are recognizing that the more big tech cracks down on dissenting voices, the louder and ironically more popular those dissenting voices become. Censorship doesn't silence dissent. It never has, just as the Soviet Politburo. It obviously doesn't work, and it's ultimately self-defeating. It's counter-effective. The British scholar Matthew Goodwin, who's studied populism for years, just tweeted this over the last day or so. Dissenting opinion won't vanish because tech CEOs ban it. The views will go underground, perhaps become radicalized in frustration, and eventually burst into the open in the streets. Perceived political abuses by tech firms are becoming a major engine of populism. Did you catch that? This is key. And it's frankly the tricky thing about trying to handle populism. As Nigel Farage puts it, populist movements, as it turns out, are rather popular. <laughs> and again, what's the key characteristic of a populist movement? It's the deep suspicion and indeed resentment of an oligarchical political class that rules by its own dictates in accordance with its own values and interests that directly contradict the values and interests of the people, the populace. And what's happening when big tech oligarchs start banning all of these people, silencing all of these voices in their progressive purge? What's happening there? The people are being silenced by an oligarchical political class that are ruling according to their own dictates at the expense of the values and concerns of the people. In other words, the social media purges prove populist concerns. 
They are the absolute verification, the corroboration of populist grievances and outrages. This is exactly what the Wall Street Journal editors just opine. And keep in mind, the Wall Street Journal was no friend to Trump or to populists. But even they see that big tech stampede, as they call it, their stampede against the right is only going to foment populist sentiments, more populist anger, which in turn is only going to lead to more political volatility and turbulence, not less. This is what the oligarchs don't quite understand. Their lages purgings are only going to increase the very populist sentiments that those purgings are intended to silence. And make no mistake, that volatility is going to shake up both political parties. Populist sentiments have little loyalty to any one political party, as many of you have expressed. I know many of you have had it with the Republican Party, rightly so. And you're not alone. This actually is the norm. For example, in Britain, get this, in the 1960s, around 50% of the British population felt strongly aligned to one of the traditional parties, the Tories or Labour. By 2015, that number fell to just over 10%. In Britain, party loyalty has imploded from 50% to 13% in a matter of 40 years. And when you look at the Brexit issue, support for Brexit cut across d directly the, the traditional party electorates. And it created an extraordinarily difficult situation for both parties, since the majority of the voters in both parties wanted to leave, while the MPs, the members of parliament, again, in both parties, themselves mostly wanted to stay in the European Union, right? Because they profit off their relationship with the Brussels. Remember, over 2 million people who vote in the Brexit referendum did not vote in the last national election in Britain. They just thought there was no choice that represented their concerns. So clearly, the opportunity is rising all over the place for new political parties to sweep in and offer voters a new direction. And that's precisely what Nigel Farage's Brexit party did. And they destroyed the Tories, the mainline Conservative Party in Britain. They destroyed the Tories in the European Parliament elections. And if the Republicans are not careful, that is exactly what may happen to them in the not-so-distant future. So Elon Musk's backlash against big tech is but the latest of a far wider populist blowback that may indeed be nothing less than a rude awakening of a sleeping giant. Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. And you'll definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded on how the Democrats, yes, are once again pursuing another futile impeachment stunt as President Trump's approval rating is actually soaring as we speak. You're not going to want to miss that. So make sure to click on the link, and I'll see you over there. God bless.